and uh, sure. being a, one of our honored recipients for the Art of Film Award. It's great to have you here. I understand you've been in Dallas now for a day or so and uh, kind of looking around a bit. I was here last month looking for theaters. Yeah, yeah, for the Citizen Twain thing, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do a play about Mark Twain. I would imagine that, I know that's a very personal project for you and something that, you know, means a lot to you. And, and having that experience of being able to take that around and, you know, for people to see that you know, kind of different side of you. I mean, you've played so many wonderful characters through the years, but I know this is something that's really personal to you. How, how has that been so far? Well, just to play a man as funny and as empathetic and, and brilliant as Mark Twain is a daily inspiration. And I've actually been working on a movie. I'm a little embarrassed to say how long, about 10 years on and off, about Mark Twain and Mary Baker Eddy, who was also a genius and a writer self-made like Mark Twain. So uh, just to be involved in a, someone uh, so in love with America and Americans and uh, so truthful and yet so accurate, it's been a real inspiration and the audiences seem to like it. Yeah. It's a comedy so you can tell if they don't like it because they don't laugh, but they're laughing. <laughs> so that's that's so encouraging. Good. Doing good. <laughs> yeah, I love I love you know watching so many of your iconic roles through the years. You know, playing guys like Doc Holliday or even Batman, and you know, being able to step into that role of being the hero. There's a really complex side of that, and kind of putting your head in the right place for that. How do you go about finding that, and and, and really you know getting yourself into that right mindset for those types of characters? Well, um, I get to name drop. When I was a kid, I, I got to know Meryl Streep through a strange circumstances, and I, you know, asked her a question not, not dissimilar to the one you just asked me. You know, how do you go about creating a role? And she said, "Well, you never really figure it out." And I thought she was trying to make me feel good <laughs> because it's a very hard job, but she wasn't kidding. It you never really figure it out. You just have to start over every time. Uh, because uh, each character is different, each person's different. And uh, with this character, uh, I've done an awful lot of work on just his uh, style because he's such a great talker and communicator. So I've been going a little crazy alone in my room like, like King of Comedy, like yeah. Rupert Pupkin <laughs> down in the basement <laughs> telling jokes to myself. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, it's make-believe, so you just find different ways to uh, kind of free your mind and to play. A lot of great uh, stars who are also great actors, guys like Marlon Brando, had a way of, of uh, always kind of making sure you know as an audience that you're playing and having fun. Um, so uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Now just to wrap this up, we can tell people they can expect to see Citizen Twain in Dallas not far from now, right? Yes, I hope, uh, I hope in the early spring. Thanks, Mitchell. Now you, you come out here and you do these conversations, and I know that you're a man that is uh, just a man of immense knowledge, but uh, is there any you kind of... You walked over here. You I, I don't, yeah, I, was, I thought James Faust was I here. I was just, <laughs> exactly. You probably thought I was James Faust. <laughs> I'm not. But, but I'm curious, like, is there preparation, or do you just kind of figure out, like, these are the things I want to make sure I cover. Do you write down questions? How do you go about setting up these conversations with guys like Val? Gosh, there's always preparation. You watch all the movies, uh, read as much as I can. So I, I want to try to make it as interesting for him as I want it to be for me. I don't have a Captain America bottle cap, so that's... The I can get you one. I is can the, hook you up. Is that doable? It is doable. Hook a brother up. We have, up. we have recording technology going on here. Make it happen. Uh, I'm, I, I know I'm a big Val Kilmer fan. What are, what are some of the movies that, in your mind, like some of the showcase pieces? I mean, obviously, let's let's not looking at the obvious stuff like The Doors and things like that. Like, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Spartan. Like, what would be a film that to you really stands out that maybe people overlooked a bit? Kill Me Again. Kill Me Again is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's a very different kind of performance. He often plays guys who sort of know the answers and go through life. And this is a case where he's literally looking for the answers to questions in a way that he is in Spartan. But in Spartan, there's a kind of confidence from that character that the, the protagonist in Kill Me Again does not have. And it's full of surprises for that reason. Yeah. 
he's one of those actors that he really is the true definition of kind of the chameleon. Like you just never really know what's going to come out of him, but it's always interesting. I think that's one of the things that makes him so fascinating. Uh, would you? Is that safe to say? Or? I mean, let's look, put it this way. Would you think we'd be talking about a guy who almost 30 years ago made a Zucker Brothers comedy as his first <laughs> starring role? That's a real sign of how much he has to offer and that thing you're talking about, how protean an actor he is, how he changes and adapts and can make himself bigger or smaller to fit the, the space of the, of the character. Yeah. And the last thing I want to ask you is, what is it about the Dallas Film Society? I mean, obviously, I have my personal feelings about it, but what is it about the Dallas Film Society that keeps you wanting to come back here and be a part of things like this? I, what I really like about here, and I worked in the uh, Metroplex in the late 90s, is people are really excited about movies here. Yeah. You know, and I don't think there's any cynicism about it. They want to come out and see people like Val Kilmore or Robert Duvall or John Lithgow and, and have them talk about what movie making means to them and, and that's a really cool thing to me you know that just shows how movies spread over everywhere they don't just come out of new york or los angeles or san francisco that they mean something to everybody everywhere in this country you, know, you guys are having a great run we had a really good year this year and last year with the film festival everything's been going great everybody's saying really good things and it feels like the art of film event especially has become kind of a nice you know, sort of late in the year thing to have to where we can, you know, everybody knows the film festival happens in April, but, you know, having something late in the year to kind of remind people we do these really cool events, you know, more than just early in the year. Yeah. And, and this especially, it seems like, I mean, Val Kilmer, what can you think of a better actor to bring out here that has that kind of legacy? I mean, he's, it's great. Was that your decision? I'm curious, Lee. Tell us. Well, uh, I, I can't say that I chose Mr. Kilmer. We all work together to try to find uh, a, a guest artist every year and we've just been so lucky and fortunate to, to bring people of such caliber, such talent as Mr. Kilmer and then Mr. Lithgow and Robert Duvall before that. Uh, what we really want to do with the Art of Film Mark is honor filmmakers, people who've uh, graced us with their work and, and uh, made us feel good about uh, watching films and showcasing what films can do and, and Mr. Kilmer has certainly done that so that was an easy decision for all of us. I have my own personal feelings about how you've been performing, and I think you're doing a great job, but how do you feel about kind of settling into this position and overseeing? So, I mean, this is a lot of stuff to put together, and it's a, it's a lot of pieces to kind of manage. How, how is that going for you so far? I, I think it's going absolutely fantastically, uh, but I've got one real great advantage, and that's my team. Yeah. Uh, I work for them. These are the folks that really know what to do. Uh, my opportunity is just to help keep them happy and keep them working on behalf of Dallas, on behalf of the film festival, on behalf of the art of film and what we do. Uh, it's the team, Mark. We couldn't do this without this team. Yeah. Now, can we give people any sort of teasers about maybe some things they can expect from next year's film festival? Or you guys already got some irons in the fire on that? Well, I, I, absolutely we do. The film festival is a year-round planning operation. Um, uh, what I can say is April 4th through 14th is going to be bigger and better than everything we've done before. Um, we've got some exciting news, we've got some movies we're lining up, we've got some venues that we're lining up, but you're going to have to wait to hear what they are. I know, I know. Wait a, wait a little bit longer. Uh, we'll start making some announcements soon, after, or probably right after the first of the year. This together. I don't sure. think people realize like all the, the, the working parts and things that have to come together for something like this to happen. And being here at the historic State Fair of Texas, I mean, what better place to be? Can you tell a little bit about the process of sure. bringing this thing together? Sure. We actually started this. Actually, my husband and I, we're, I don't know where there Alan is. There he is, Alan and I, started this about three years ago. Um, the first year we had Robert Duvall, and the idea was to have something in the fall because we always have the, the uh, event in the, the, in the spring, the festival, right. and it was something to kind of fund things in the fall. And so, you know, you look for talent, which is difficult because they're all busy making movies and when can they come and how far in advance can you and then we were looking for a place that was you know just something lovely that really spoke to Dallas and and um, I guess the history of the city and this is definitely my favorite place in the city and um, so Al, that's how we, we can, uh, get a shot <laughs> yeah well, like well Alan answer some questions so we did start this a few years ago and it's um it's grown this is our third year first year Robert Duvall yeah. last year John Lithgow and then this year Val Kilmer so it's it's, it's turned out to be something that this folks love yeah so 
And and talk a little bit about uh, the importance of having like a great team of people that you know help put these things together because that's one of the things I love about the Dallas Film Society is that every single person that works for it it seems like it, without any one of them you know the whole thing wouldn't work is that safe to say? It's always a, it's always a team effort. With this we've got three co-chairs tonight and then of course we've got a really strong staff. The festival is just it's amazing. I think we have I want to say we have 700 volunteers. It's wow. it's incredible and and repeat volunteers people that come back year after year after year that really love it. So it, you're right it's, it's it's a team effort. It never happens with just one person. So, do you guys get to come out to the state fair? Do you come out like dur during the time when the fair is actually going on? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. You eat the fried food? Absolutely. You can't get fried Twinkies anymore. You know the news, They're right? Hostess. I know. Oh, Did they close? The it's completely year. closed down today. I know. Yeah. It was sad. 18, that was a sad day. Yeah. I know. It's so sad. It's a sad day, but a great day, you know, to be here and everything. Someone okay. Don't pick that up. Ding Someone dongs. Yeah. Yeah, everything. <laughs> my grandfather worked for Hostess. I mean, it, it's really? yeah, it's it's really kind of breaking my heart right now. They so. might pull it together, but they didn't. It, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, last question: favorite Val Kilmer movie? The Doors. Well, it takes a few months and a lot of hard work, but quite frankly, I have to give most of the credit to the Dallas Film Society staff because they are geniuses. They juggle ten thousand tiny details all at the same time and put it all together. And um, my part was just making a lot of phone calls and getting a lot of people here that loved movies anyway, love Val. Yeah. So here we are. How can you not love Val Kilmer? I know, right? What a great body of work. <laughs> Since 1983, it's something like 48, 49 movies, something like that, isn't it? I wonder if he even has thought about the fact that he's about to celebrate a 30th anniversary of working in film. I was thinking about that. That's a long history. What better way to kick that off with the Art of Film Award? You know, that's great. What's your favorite Val Kilmer movie? I have to ask. Well, I don't know if Val will like this, but I love Tombstone. And Doc Holliday when he says, I'll be your Huckleberry. <laughs> I've used that line. I'm not even exactly sure what it means, but I've used that line. So, yeah. Very, very cool. What, what, what's the part of tonight, like, like out of everything that happens here, I mean, obviously walking the carpet's fun, hearing the conversation is fun, the dinner's great. Like, is there one particular thing that you're really looking forward to being able to do tonight? Well, you know, I always love the interview on stage. You find uh, Elvis Mitchell, first of all, is tops in his field. And you always find something interesting that you didn't know. And quite frankly, in the um, video log that they put together, you see films that you had forgotten about. And that reminds you and you say, oh my gosh, I have to go back and watch that again. He was so fabulous in that. So um, that's how, the way I felt and I'm really looking forward to that portion of the evening.